Are you wanting to run sequences, but you're not quite sure which email or subject line or perhaps whether or not personalization tokens make a difference? Well, A-B testing in HubSpot sequences is now an option. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use those features and test how to get the best outcome for your sequences. Welcome to HubSpot Hacks, where we help you get more out of HubSpot. All right, HubSpot fans, if you've been using sequences for any bit of time, you've known that for a long time we want A-B testing. Well, HubSpot has listened and now there's A-B testing available inside of HubSpot sequences. But really, we have to make sure we take a step back and think about why do we wanna do A-B testing? And usually it is going to be improving the outcome of your sequences, improving engagement, and hopefully in the end, improving conversions. So let's dive into this video and see how this works to do A-B testing in your HubSpot sequences. So we're gonna start here in the sequences screen and depending on what video you may have watched of ours in the past, that sequence screen has changed a little bit over the last several months, but we still are gonna start here creating a sequence. So for the time being, we're just going to run through one of these pre-made sequences over on the left and we're gonna click on create sequence just so we have something to work with. Now you'll notice here in this sequence screen, again, depending on which video you may have watched previously, we now edit all of our steps in this steps uh, tab. Now down below you'll see this version A. So this is where the sequence A-B testing comes in. So what you have here is we have the ability to test something an A version and a B version. And the goal here is to run enough of these out to our contacts or prospects, however you're using this. And ultimately one of those is going to become a better performer and the other one's going to be a lesser performer leading us to say A version is actually going to be a better fit for us. So before we jump in here, what are the things that you probably should test and what should you stay away from? Well, really here, there's about four things you can test and one is gonna be subject lines, one's going to be personalization tokens, one's going to be the call to action in those specific sequences, and the last one's going to be whether or not you have a specific body copy or the way that you write that message, so it really comes down to the messaging. So here in this version, we're actually going to use this to show you how to create the A-B test. You're just gonna click on A-B test. Now this is where the crux of the testing comes in. So sometimes people wanna jump right in and they wanna start testing, but if you think about sequences, sequences are all built, at least the automated email parts are. They are built using templates over in the conversations area in the sales tools in HubSpot. So we're gonna jump over to the templates because I've already got two built over there. And we're gonna start here with this best practice. So best practice number one, go ahead and name your templates version A and version B or something that allows you to know that this is the same template and this is one version and this is two version. So if I was going to name these somewhat descriptive, because again, over time, you wanna be able to quickly look at the information and know what you're looking at. So version A might be, I'm going to use a short headline. So I might rename this to inbound 23 intro version A, short headline, inbound 23 intro, uh, intro version B, long headline uh, or long subject line. So again, keep in mind your naming convention matters. Most of the time what we see is naming conventions like this, where we've got just a bunch of templates. They're all named something and you don't really know what you're working with. So you'll see here, if I go back to our versions, when I open this up, I've got version A and you'll notice the only thing that I'm changing here is going to be our uh, subject line. So I'm actually using this as an outbound mechanism for me to reach out to folks that might be at this conference, the HubSpot conference that's coming up here. And version B is going to have the same message and we're going to be testing just that subject line. So a little bit longer, I'm introducing the word Boston in the subject line as well. Now again, go back to science class in high school, you wanna have one control factor and one variable, which is how you get to A-B testing. Do not, do not, do not test multiple things like one email has this subject line and this body copy and this call to action. You're not gonna learn anything if everything keeps moving and changing. So pick one thing and then test against that and then you can always go ahead and test again. So once you have that set up, so I'm gonna go back to our sequences and let's say that we're gonna use those versions that I just introduced and we'll go in here, version B. And let's again, for the sake of this testing, let's pretend that these are actually the same thing. So if I wanna turn this on, I just simply hit version B. And then now that those are both toggled to the right, on the left, you'll see that those are both blue, which means that anytime you enroll multiple people in a sequence, Someone will get the A and someone will get the B and they'll just kind of bounce back and forth there. So when you actually run this, then you'll be able to see this data inside of your sequence as you get people to respond or interact with your sequence. So I've actually sent out a one uh, email sequence with this template just so you can see what the results look like. 
And here on this screen, it looks the same as it does with any other sequence. You've got your enrollments, meeting rate, reply rate, so on and so forth. And then down on below, you've got this version A and version B. So version A is gonna show me that there were 68 people that got this version, and I had about 39% opens, 72 that got this version, about 29% opens. Now, pause here for a second, because when you do A-B testing, statistical relevance is gonna be important. I'm not gonna give you a math class or a, hist or a stat stats lesson here, but what you do wanna realize is you probably wanna to get to at least 100 people per email variation before you actually make any determinations. Again, if you want more <laughs> details on that, you can go ahead and learn about A-B testing on your own in terms of stats, but that would be a best practice to follow. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is when I'm looking at opens, Opens can be difficult because when we're looking at Apple privacy or maybe people have like, you know, pixel blockers on, any of that's going to affect the ability for us to look at those open rates. So sometimes you may choose opens as one of your variables. If I had a couple of responses to this, I would actually look at the responses or, or meetings booked as my outcome as opposed to my opens. So again, for the purposes here, we can't show a lot of confidential data anyway. So this was a good use case where I could just get something out, show you this functionality, and then ultimately long-term, uh, we might wanna use variation uh, A because it seemed to have performed better than variation B. So I could actually take variation A, which again, if we go back to that email, that was this particular um, template. So we've got the shorter headline. Now maybe I use this headline again in my next test and instead of using this body copy, perhaps I use different body copy. So that promotes a better response. So again, that's how to use this A-B testing. Ultimately, it's gonna be really helpful to you and your sales team if you're using templates across multiple sales team members and you can aggregate that data and see what is working across your organization and make those changes on the fly. How incredible is that? We've been asking for it for a long time and now it's here. The last thing to realize is you can also see this data inside of the steps in your sequence. So if we click on steps, you'll be able to see that this is the email step and these are the two that are working here. So we've got again that same about 40% opens and 31% opens here. So if I wanted to continue to run this sequence to more contacts, I can actually go in and say, I'm gonna turn off this variation B and then I'm going to save. And then let's say I'm going to add another one here. So let's say I'm gonna add this, let's pretend this is a version C and then I would actually turn version C on and run A against C and any new people that come into the sequence will get these two variations instead of the A, B that were driven to the first folks. If someone's already part of a sequence and you change it like this, nobody who's currently enrolled in a sequence will get the variations. You'll have new enrollments that will now get this new thing that you just changed and saved. So that's it, makes it really super easy. Before you had to go in and name your templates certain things and set up certain uh, different types of sequences to run against each other, and now you can do it right inside of the HubSpot portal. So that's it, go ahead and dive in, see how you can test those sequences for yourself and hopefully you find some wins. For more tips, tricks, and how-tos, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week.